So this is about learning to do what you want in your own mind. I know for me, I was taught that my wants didn't matter and that the wants that my wants just and my desires are really just something I should get rid of because they don't matter. And then Neville tells me they do matter and there's ways to fulfill them on the inside. And I wondered what the point of that was, but the more I test what he says, the more I see that he's right. That it doesn't matter what we do on the inside. It doesn't matter what we say. Even if we think it doesn't matter, it does matter. If I'm arguing with somebody and I think it feels good and I continue doing it and then I take a shower and get dressed and go get some groceries and, and I forget that I did that, that mattered. It mattered enough to me to imagine it. It mattered enough to, for me to, to think about it and dwell upon it and feel after it. Have you ever felt after an argument in your mind? You can really make it feel real because it might feel natural to you to do that. But we have to expand our idea of what naturalness is to us. And so William Blake said that I must create a system or be enslaved by another man's. I will not reason and I will not compare. My business is to create. It's one of my favorite quotes because he says he has to create a system to live upon or I'll be basically living the thoughts of other people. I know we do that to a degree, but you can give me a framework in which I can imagine, but don't tell me how I can imagine or how I can uh, shape the image in me. I'm allowed to shape it whichever way I want. But if I only think in terms of what I know, what I think I think reality is, then I'm only going to imagine within that belief. And so I have to believe on some level that I can be different than what I am now if I wish to change. If I have the desire to change, which some do, some don't, if I do have that desire, then I have to be willing to give up the present ideas of myself. I have to be willing to see that I could be more than what I am, or I could be molded differently. Maybe the idea of being more doesn't make sense, but if you can just see it, that you're simply rearranging the same imagination that's in you. That's all you're doing. And so we have to create some system by which we will live. And you can create your own ideas of what you want to be, the purposes you want to have. And if you can't find the desires or the purposes, you're going to have to create them. If you can't figure out what you want, try to create a desire to get you moving, to get you to learning how to imagine this way. But don't reason and don't compare, as Blake says. Because the moment you start comparing, comparison comes from insecurity. And basically, if you're comparing, you're already insecure. Compare, you know, the size of this, the size of that, the height of somebody. You're comparing, you're giving all these, uh, you're giving so much power to the appearances of, the, of, of everything when it says don't judge off of those. And then he also adds that he won't reason. He doesn't reason his way out of fulfillment. And so by doing those two things, now that's said in a negative, but if you say it in the affirmative, it would be, instead of comparing, I will be secure. Instead of saying, I will not compare, say, I will be secure. That I will not reason is, I will believe. So you can affirm it. You say, I must create a system or be enslaved by someone else's. Or you can also say, I must create a system to be freed in myself, to be freer than what I am. And I will believe and I will be secure. And my business is to create. And so we have to create things in us if we wish to have a different change in us. And so I'm speaking to the person who wants to have a different experience. I'm speaking to the person who wants to change themselves. And so if that's you, that you have this desire to change, what I would recommend you do is find what you want and then imagine a little bit beyond it. And so you, you figure out what you want to be. And, you know, Neville asked the question, what would it be like where I the person that I want to be? Where are the man that I want to be? What would it, what would it feel like? What would it be like? Now, the thing you want to be might be so far removed from, from life, you might think that it's impossible. But we're not questioning the possibility of what you want to be. We're questioning what would it be like? What would it feel like? So you answer those questions. You have to start answering different types of questions because you're going to ask, well, when will it happen and how long and how will it come about? You're going to ask all these questions, but you got to ask the right questions that will lead you to 
accepting it. So you ask yourself, what would it feel like were I were that way? Even though I, it might be impossible, what would it feel like though? And so you imagine being it, and then you imagine a little bit beyond it. And you don't, you know, Neville would give a scene that would imply were he that new way. And so if I go to imagine myself, let's use Las Vegas, for example, I don't imagine myself at the gate or on the airplane. I go to Las Vegas and a little bit beyond it. I'm having a drink at a certain, or I'm walking to a show. And I must imply that I'm there. Now, that was my desire to be in Las Vegas. And so I'd have to create a new desire if I want to change something. And so the ends that we imagine imply changes in us. And that is what we persist in, in being. And it starts to harden into fact in this world. And so you're going to have to learn to start doing exactly what you want on the inside. It's not about changing what's out there, but changing what's in here. And you can practice that every single night. But eventually you're going to have to really think the things you want to think. You're going to have to have the things you want to have. With really between, it's almost between you and yourself. Your communion with yourself. You're not asking if it's okay to have it. You're not asking if, you're not, you're not going to anything outside of you to, to see if it's, you know, if you are allowed to think this way. Just start thinking that way. Don't judge and wonder if, if you know, oh, I don't think I could do this or I don't think I'm allowed to imagine it. And you have to expand your idea of reality. You have to expand your idea of what reality could give you. Because if you are feeling it's natural to receive the things you don't want, really question why are you always thinking what you don't want to think? We have to start with thought. If we're not even thinking the thoughts we want, then what are we actually doing? We're just aimlessly walking around in nightmares. We have to start going towards what we want. Neville would say, don't tell me what you don't want, tell me what you want. And really just think about what he said right there. Because if you start imagining what you don't want, if you get in the habit of doing that, you're never going to get anything. You're going to get what you don't want all the time. And the freedom you get once you start, you get the ball rolling and you start to just you, the snowball starts to build. You start to realize that, okay, if I can imagine that, I'm going to imagine this and I'm going to imagine that. I'm not going to bar myself. I'm going to keep going and keep thinking about what I want to and keep my eyes off on my desire and not so much on what I don't want to happen. And so many times in these, these questions of whens and hows, instead of having it, we're questioning, we're really coming out of a fear. We're really saying that we, that we just don't want it to happen this way or we don't want the timing to be that. But it says it will, it will be sure and it will not be late. So I just trust that it will not be late. Just accept that it will not be late. It will ripen and it will flower. But it won't be late. And so when you ask yourself, what would it be like? What would it feel like were I the person I want to be? You have to expand your idea of reality to include you that way. Because if you think reality is too small for that, if you think reality is not big enough, you're going to live that way. And then you're going to modify every single desire you have. It, every, it tells us that all the evil comes from sin. So there's not like this devil running around putting evil into people. Satan in the scripture is just out. And so we, if we're always missing our marks inside, that's what creates these, these, these problems of greeds, of, of all the seven, you know, the deadly sins, which is just simply feasting on sin. There's different types of sins that we can feast upon but they come from missing our mark. And so we have to expand expand your idea, just accept that there's a reality, that reality is big enough for you to be the thing you want to be. You're included as well. That's why you're here. And once you see that, as Neville said, once you see that causation is mental, the law makes a lot of sense. You start living inwardly from a mental perspective of having things, being things, and you'll start to see how life forms from the inner man's perspective, not just the outer's. The outer's ex eventually experiences what the inner man's experiencing. And so I have to go all the way back to the origin of my harvest. And these were mental seeds that I planted. They weren't physical ones. And if you're reaping a harvest you don't want to have, it tells us in Scripture what to do. Just, just keep planting better seeds. You might have to gather, it says gather up the, the good and the bad, but, but just keep planting good. So you, you don't... You don't you start fearing your harvest. You don't fear your harvest. You're changing it. You're planting new things in your harvest. 
into your mental garden. And so you just keep on putting new and new seeds in you. Keep planting more. Even if you might have lost your attention or lost your focus on yourself and you became so outwardly focused on wanting to control and change the environment, just go back and keep planting good seeds. And it, it really, it's an infinite garden. There's, there's, not, there's infinite soil. And so you have to think in terms, uh, you have to broaden your perspective on the inside and see that reality is bigger than you might be thinking, that you might be accepting. And then you'll see everything almost as a symbol. And so you start fishing on the inside of yourself and you start catching the fish. You start catching the feelings. You catch the feeling that you're looking for. Or you, you, you tame the horse and you jump and you ride it. You ride the state. You start, to, you start to see how it's all mental. And you can mentally start catching the, the feelings that you want to have. The, you start to see that things are, in a way, states and feelings on the inside. And so my desire is in me, and it's, a, it's how I would feel about myself. It's what I would believe about myself. And that is what it tells us that it was what creates. That's the unseen. It's created by the, or the seen is created by the unseen. And so I changed the unseen. No longer living life outwardly to inwardly. Because the moment I do that, I become dependent on it, and then I will get frustrated when it's not giving me the thing I want. And then I have to change the relationship within myself, start giving myself what I want. And when you start talking and you start doing and you start hearing the things you want inside, life becomes better. Even if the outside might not be exactly as you might like, it starts to get better. Just simply doing what you want. Give yourself that freedom and expand your idea of reality that you, you're, the reality is big enough for you to imagine what you want. Imagine how you want. To no longer live in sin, but in your own righteousness, which is your own fulfillment. So you're, you're self-convincing, you're self-believing, you're self-accepting, you're self-giving, you're self-growing or self-changing. It's just you and yourself. So you commune with yourself, as it says in the, and I think it's either Psalms or Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs. Could be wrong, though. So you start communing just with yourself. You don't ask yourself, you don't ask if I could believe it. Don't ask me. You start to believe this about yourself. It doesn't matter where you're at. Physically, it doesn't matter. Then that's easier said than done, but it's true. And so you don't put your security in things anymore. You no longer think that it's your house that keeps you secure. We know that's not the case. And so you would have to start now because if we don't change the thoughts now, if we don't change how we, we believe and feel within, within ourselves, if we don't change our mental environments, they're just going to stay the same. You're just going to keep thinking the same things. So you might as well think new things or create new, new ideas in you about yourself because you're just going to remain the same. It's... It's fairly obvious that people remain the same if they don't change how they, how they are on the inside. And so you're not an exception and neither am I. And so I, if I have something that I wish to be, I can't keep leaving myself there. I'm just going to always forever wish to be it. And so when you go to imagine being the one you want to be, it might be so, you might, you might think that, the, well, the one I want to be is freed from this and that. And that might feel impossible, but don't ask yourself if it's possible. Just ask yourself, what would it feel like? Just what would it, what would it feel like were I that, the one that I want to be? Before you think that reality doesn't allow it, simply uh, accept that reality can be that forgiving. Can it really be? It tells us that Christ is, forg- is the one who forgives. And so I, reality is Christ. So I feel that I, I feel that reality is forgiving. And so I start to, regardless of what I think about it, from my view, I ask myself, I just answer the question, what would it feel like were I that? I don't reason. I don't compare myself. My business is to create. And so I think I'll end it there. Uh, thank you for listening. I know that this, this video really the the message is more of an idea of expansion I, I i like that word personally because i've always felt so 
restricted and contracted in life. So the idea of expansion has always been something that I've liked. But thanks for listening.